to experience that. We've got yeah. a uh, white plane out there for weeks. I haven't seen it uh, recently, but there's been a white plane out there every time it takes off or anything. It goes crazy. Oh, oh wow. So, yeah. the phone's reset, all kinds of stuff. Like jamming the frequencies and stuff like that. So, you can hear it. You can hear it. You can hear the radio frequencies. Oh, and then you're like, there you go. There's a, there's a, I ran beach in San Diego. Right outside. Of it. Yeah, you are. You are right past the window. What's the other one? Two or three seconds before they came by. I think we're at the point. We're on 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 the Twenty-nine. So this is this bottom part itself is just a transmitter. Oh, uh, uh, this is a receiver. Receiver doesn't require as much. Transmitters are putting out the power, so you're putting out all that power. So you can see the antennas that are outside that we have. Uh, uh, this would be the equivalent. Uh, this whole setup would be the equivalent of what I'm working with on that table there. And there's even smaller radios now that we have nowadays. Uh, but you can talk around the world uh, on that one. Just gonna go with we were just in Florida. A conversation going on in Florida. Wow. So, but this thing is heavy. So, I can only imagine, you know, during war, you know, you put this in, a, in an airplane, but if you had to take it out, it wasn't probably all that fun. Yeah. Uh, that thing I can move around all day long. But, uh, and there's de definitely a difference in technology. This one would be this, this receiver here, this right here would be the World War II equivalent, and then and 10 years later they came out with this, which is uh, a, a lot. Uh, it was a significant jump in the technology of, of the, uh, uh, the receiver and then the speaker. And there is a power supply for it that has a lot of the military uh, uh, stuff has their own specific power supplies. But we plug in the normal outlets, 110 or 220 lines. Oh, they yeah. have specific power supplies that, so that way it wasn't just a normal uh, power supply. So we have a, we actually have two of those. One of our members actually donated one. To Idaho, it was so heavy he didn't want to take it with him. He just said, I'm just going to donate it to the museum. And if you want to see over here, this is kind of what the technology was that they used uh, 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 vacuum tubes, paper uh, um, uh, cartridges that were capacitors and stuff like that. The reason why it's so dirty and we leave it that way is because a, 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 a lot of these tubes, well, um, we use smaller components now, but those tubes, when you turn them on, they glow a, a, a orange or red color. They get really warm. They put off a lot of heat. Um, but not only would it keep you warm <laughs> if it was cold, you could like you know you could you know, get some warmth off of it. But a lot of critters would like to crawl in there. So any holes oh, and stuff right. like that, you get mice. So that's where you get the uh, the rat's nest. You hear about that, you know? There, if you'd open up your radio and you'd find all kinds of junk in there, you have to take it out. Oh, okay. and, and, so we leave it like looking like that, so that way you can see all the all the, uh, uh, the folks that you know the, the mice or whatever that lived in it over, yeah. over the you know its lifetime. Show the real history. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. And then everybody takes it for granted, but this is, this is the TVs back in the day. You know, wow. it has all the ch original channels one through thirteen. So you had uh, this was a. Uh, yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, I remember having a, a TV in my room. Uh, only when I was sick, you know, the family TV would roll it around. <laughs> and it was a small little tube like that, you know. And I got to put it next to my bed and watch on a small little. Now we have these ginormous screens, yeah. you know. <laughs> and black and white too. It's not even color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this one down here, this one is so. This is kind of like our uh, uh, for the uh, military. This is kind of like our Walkman, you know? So you have an antenna, and the troops would use this to listen to the radio at night. So because of the, uh, uh, the stuff that they're doing, you know, you, you kind of get uh, bored, right? So this is an AM uh, short band receiver. So they would put this up and huddle around it at night for entertainment, and you would mm. pick anything you could find 
there still is short wave, a lot of short wave radio that goes on around the world. So at night, you, you can turn this on, turn it on, and pick up on a lot of those communications still. So, uh, and they're and they're all the way in South America, uh, uh, European. Uh, That's crazy. So, but that was theirs. You know, you got a few of those, but they're really neat because. Uh, you heard that's that was the name. They didn't have TV when you were when you're out in the field. You know, so you just listen to whatever you can find. Yeah. Now our troops got smartphones. He's out. We'll figure out what we have. The uh, majority of them do work. We do have them put them on the air from time to time, so they do work. Uh, mm -hmm. But we're looking at. Military radios on this side, which is uh, World War II and the Korean War, and then these are the commercial radios that came on afterwards. So a lot of a lot of radios that were produced in the military after the war, they became commercial radios that, that different companies, a lot of these, Helicopter, RCA, they started making radios. But the Korean War started, and a lot of those private collections of radios that people had were actually donated back to the military to help the war effort. A lot of people didn't get their radios necessarily back, but uh, <laughs> some of these are some radios that were uh, used back uh, in the 40s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Damn. Y personas empezaron a comprar radios porque compañías empezaron a hacerlos, pero los ocupaban para la guerra, ¿verdad? Yeah. Y luego las personas, como necesitaban para la guerra, las personas empezaron a regresarlos para que les ayudaran a vender. Dice que casi todos funcionan. Pero se los traen. Que no los tenían como de antigüedad, pues. Dijo el 90% es colección de solo un señor. Los postres, pues, uh, so if your plane went down or your, your ship went down and you threw the rest of those life rafts out, no. uh, this would probably be your only communication no. to try and get picked up. Oh. So and you would strap it, you'd sit in there and you put your legs in between here and you'd strap it into your on your legs and you would crank on this crank for about two minutes. So you got to crank on it. And it's got a little generator inside the light. When the light comes on, then you know you've you've got a battery or you've got enough energy into it uh, that a few more seconds later this little transmitter light will start blinking when it starts blinking then you know you're sending out a message of SOS so you would hopefully have your kite deployed you have enough wind to get your antenna up as high as you can and you'd send out SOS for a few minutes and then try to move position uh, because not only could the, the good guys hear you but the bad guys would hear you oh and, yeah and when they hear a signal you can, if you have two or three different positions, you draw it lines, you know exactly where the person is. So no. you can find out where, where they were if they were behind. So you would send out, a, you would send out a message and then move. Uh, if you're in a boat, you try to, you oh, try to okay. move position in your boat. But this was a, uh, uh, they completely float. So if you, if you lost it in the water, it would, it would actually float. And there's uh, some folks that actually found these things washed ashore. Yeah. So they still, and, and you open, they're watertight, so open them up, they're perfectly clean inside and they still work. So all three of them work, and we've uh, we've actually used them. So. I think they had that way back then. Yeah. I do what we got now. It actually was a German technology. So the Germans had it before we nice. did, and we, we uh, captured a few of them, and then sent them uh, back to the United States, and then they reverse engineered it and built these, Whoa. so that way they put them on all the ships and all the airplanes. But it actually it gets hooked up to a radio, and messages can be sent. So. Um, you could type a message into this, and it would spit it out on a, a tape, which then you could feed into the machine, and the machine would then send it to the radio, and the radio would send it out. And there'd be another machine just like this on the other end that would be listening. And as the, as it came in, it would actually type, the, the keys would start typing, and the message would come out on the paper. <laughs> so we have one here, and then we have one in the main museum, uh, uh, and, and uh, we have a gentleman that's working on it. But there's still clubs that actually do this, on uh, like, certain Saturdays of the of the year 
and they still put out stuff over the airwaves. So we're hoping to get it online, get it hooked up to a radio, and then watch it work because uh, it'd be pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. the gentleman that's actually working on it, he's retired from the, uh, uh, the Press Enterprise. So he was an editor oh, wow. for the Press Enterprise. The club. So he, he thinks this is fun because that was all his, you know, he's always into the news and he's always heard about these things. But now he gets to work on it, so he's been cleaning it up and trying to get the parts so he can get it working again. Damn. Yeah. Cool. So it'll be neat. Yeah. And then obviously we have a, a, a different, if you know Morse code or you've heard Morse code. So this is kind of the original way of talking. Before we had our voice to be able to say over the air, like talk to each other. You, you had to use a specific... Yeah, they call it Morse code, those dots in, in, in uh, uh, gashes. And there's a whole language, and we have a few people in our club that actually know and, and understand it, and they have conversations. And it's amazing just to watch these guys, and, just, and they're fast. Some of them are really fast. And, I, and so it's just, it's almost like, yeah, just <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, But this, these two right here are early, this is a 1920s, 1930s, um, and then these are more of the Vietnam era. Um, the Jeeps out there, a lot of those guys, if they were out there, radio guys, you'll see an antenna on one of those. But if you had a, a, a radio guy with you, and you had to send information, this would strap on your leg. Oh, what? So you'd strap this on your leg, and that guy would be riding in the Jeep and sending out messages. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> Pretty neat. All right. Thank you we'll have, so have a great day. Enjoy it's kind the rest of the museum. It's kind of sad that we got a lot of war, but it's interesting to find all this stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it's oh, yeah. our history. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Those are the Jeeps that they were sending the messages on. Mientras iban manejando, estaban mandando los mensajes con la cosa así. Damn, they probably have shit suspension though. I think it's just a hanger, no? But I'm not allowed if you're allowed. I'm not sure if you're allowed to go in there. Got a picnic.